All right, so we have a rigid shop vac that isn't working for some reason. And so you want to plug it in and try to switch. It's not working. So the first thing to do is to check, make sure the switch is not faulty. What you'll want to do is take off the lid and there are six screws you'll want to unscrew there. You'll might find easy to use this is just a drill with a Phillips head on it. Just go ahead and unscrew that. Once you have that unscrewed, take off the top. You'll see that the, the switch has two black wires. You can disconnect the wires. And then what you need next is, is a multimeter. And I have this digital it's a multimeter here. You'll want to set it to the settings of ohms. There's like the omega sign there, put it on the lowest setting. And then take the leads, doesn't matter which uh, positive or negative, connect it to the switch metal connectors there. The readings just jump around. Now make sure you turn it on. The numbers start to change. That means the switch is good. So if the switch is good and it's still not working, that means that the thermal fuse is likely blown and you put that aside. The uh, thermal fuse is right where the coils are of the motor. So you'll want to take the motor off to do that. You have another one, two, three, uh, six screws to remove. Go ahead and unscrew that. Add a little more torque. this thing still 13 millimeter wrench you know turn to the left left to Lucy and take this nut off there's a, a washer and this aluminum disc here take that off then there's another metal washer here and then there are two screws. Go ahead and remove them. When you do that, hold the motor because it's gonna fall. And I have the motors dusty again, so I'm gonna just vacuum it. Before you go too far in taking this thing apart, get a multimeter and put it on the lowest setting on the ohms, uh, the resistance, and then check. See there's a black wire here and a white wire here. I'll watch the numbers there. Now if there is flow, then the numbers should change. So. I'm seeing flow here. The white wire here, the other side, and I'm not seeing any flow with the white wire in the neutral. That means that there's a thermal fuse on this side of the terminal, the coils. So what we'll have to do is 
unscrew two screws. These are there are two types of screws in this vacuum. These are the long ones. They're pretty much the same diameter. Take this apart. Just be careful getting this thing off. We got brushes here that squeeze from the side. Sometimes the bottom comes out first. Alright. Now just we got these brushes here. So you can see the contact with the copper spinny thing. All right, so now we look here and there is a claw covering a wire. And that piece of claw is hiding the thermal fuse. So what we can do is expose the Close the fuse. There it is. And I'll get some pliers. <clears throat> and I'm just gonna chop off the bad fuse. Fuse it says micro temp and then it's got a number G4A01. Has TF121C, which is an important thing, and it's 121 degrees Celsius is its threshold for the fuse. And what I did is I went on Amazon and I just searched for uh, a fuse. I found one, China, and actually it uh, shipped from China. It took about three weeks. A six pack for about five bucks, or was it five ninety nine? And so now we can take one of the fuses, make sure it's uh, got similar rating. This one says Suffuse SF119E. The important part is uh, 121C, and it's got uh, 10 amps, 250 volts. I trimmed this fuse. I made it a little longer to account for the wire that I cut off with this. So now you, you want to test your new fuse, make sure that it's working. And you see that when I put it on both ends, there's resistance or there's the electron flow. Put on the new fuse on the, on the coil here. So what I have to connect these is I took 20 gauge copper wire and wound it on, on like a small screwdriver and came up with really tightly wound copper and I'm going to use that to connect the wire here. The thing to also remember, though know, the coil here looks like it's copper. It's actually not copper. It's some kind of white metal that's covered with like copper looking plastic. So you want to strip that right at the Edge there, so there's good contact. I think the wire exposed is white, and then I have my coiled copper there. Doesn't matter which way you put the thermal fuse, there is no plus, minus, or negative, positive end. It's all the same thing. All it does is allows the 
electricity to flow and if it reaches a certain temperature it will basically blow the fuse and it will stop working like what happened here I don't know if somebody just ran a vac for way too long or if there's temperature was hot in the room or whatever somehow it's blue so we want to put this in here all right and now before we put it all back together we want to make sure that there is actual uh, electron flow from one terminal to the other. On this unit was on the white wire, the neutral side, but I don't think it always is that way. So here we see that there is electron flow. That's great. I'm just gonna crimp my self-made connector here and make sure it's solid. I'm just got a good pair of pliers. And then just gonna check. So now we slid the cloth back on and brought the wire back so that it uh, won't get caught in any way. And now it's time to put this back together. Take this uh, spindle here. Uh, this one's a bit rusty. I'm just gonna spray some silicone lubricant just to protect it a little bit. Put the bottom in first if you want. Then let's set it right here. Put this on this way. Here it goes in nicely. And I have made marks so that they all go back the same way. Put the top on. And this way. So as you're putting this on, you're putting the top on you have to pull these carbon brushes apart so that it can fit in fit down all the way get our screws here okay i think i'm gonna leave this at about five newton meters of torque it's roughly what it took to loosen them. You got metal going into plastic, you don't want to over tighten it. Next step is connect the carbon brushes here. They go on the right side. They go in snug, you don't have to tighten them, but if you loosen them too much, you might want to tighten them. The white wire goes where it says N. Or neutral. And that's pretty firm there. And then the black wire, I marked it here. It goes on here. This one's a little loose, so I'm going to crimp it. Next step is get this back on. Here. Put the screws in. Make sure that they're seated in. All the Now we have 
this washer here. Put that on here this way. This aluminum wheel on washer or 13 millimeter nut. So if you just kind of hold the aluminum disc you can pretty much tighten that. All right, so getting closer. Now, put the top on. So let's connect the switch. Doesn't matter where you put it. And even at this point, test it if you want before putting everything together and then finding out if it doesn't work. Just be careful. And there it is. We've got power. Put the top on. Take the power cord. Put it in the slot there. Kind of make sure this wire is not too loose. Places to secure it there. flush carefully turn it upside down you can hold it with your hand you've got six screws initially I, I like to go from one end to the other You can buy probably at Radio Shack, or you can buy it like I did on Amazon. Came out to like a dollar per fuse. So a little bit of work, but you got yourself. Functional shop back. Don't have to buy any one. Alright. Time to test it out. Put that all back together. Alright, let's see if it goes. fuse and check for the uh, faulty switch. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care.